Throughout the book of Kings, it details the reigns of the different kings of Israel during the divided kingdom period. Some of these stories are wild and filled with kings only sitting on the throne for seven days before someone raised up and took the throne from them. A lot of the kings of Israel did not serve God, so the accounts of their reigns are loaded with what happens when God's chosen people decide to walk contrary to the things of God. So we're going to make a tale list to see who had the best reign and who had the worst in such a given situation. Situation. When compared to the Kings of Judah video that we did recently during the Divided Kingdom period, I cannot quite use the same ranking system as I did in our previous video. It's really just a sad race to the bottom. So instead, we are simply judging them based on the quality of their reign and the decisions they made as king, along with the entertainment factor of this story. As compared to our Kings of Judah tailors, where we looked at their obedience to God, quality of their reign, and entertainment factor of this story. But before we get into the rankings, if you are intrigued by the video thus far, then why not consider leaving a like and even subscribing for more of this type of content. On this channel, we primarily break down fictional media from a Christian perspective with emphasis on stories and just the Bible. We also make content covering unsung Bible stories you probably haven't heard about along with generalized edifying Christian topics, as well as an initiative to do Christian creative projects ranging from making replicas of different places in the Bible to recreating scenes from Christian fictional films into a small scale video game. We even started covering Christian fictional comic books as well. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into the the tale is, starting with the first king of the divided kingdom, Jeroboam. When Solomon died, his son Rehoboam ascended to the throne. Because of the wicked things Solomon did in his later years, such as sacrificing to other gods due to the influence of his 700 wives and 300 concubines, God's anger was kindled against Solomon, but for the sake of his promise with King David, he decided not to rip the kingdom from Solomon's hand, but to do so in the time of his son Rehoboam. God raised up Solomon's adversaries to cause all kinds of troubles with him. Even one of Solomon's servants, Jeroboam, rebelled against him and fled. The prophet Ahijah came to Jeroboam and told him the prophecy that the Lord will split the kingdom of Israel into two. Ten tribes will go to Jeroboam and the tribe of Judah will remain loyal to the line of King David. When Solomon heard of this, he sought to kill Jeroboam. Who had already fled to Egypt. Jeroboam returned to Israel which was in unrest because of the decisions of Rehoboam who instead of following the advice of the elders followed after the advice of his friends who gave him some really dumb advice. If you want to know what the advice was then you could go read it for yourself through the reference verses that will be on screen during the scoring segment. Just as Ahijah prophesied, Israel was indeed split in two. Instead of following the ways of God, Jeroboam made the people follow after false gods that he made, which caused the Israelites who loved the Lord to go to Judah to worship. After some time, a man of God came to Jeroboam and proclaimed the judgment of God upon him and his house, stating that a son descending from the line of David will raise up and take him out. Jeroboam, not liking this, attempted to arrest the man of God, but as soon as he raised his hand to charge him, it began to wither away just as the man of God told him. The man of God told him, oh good good number of things but i just condensed it as this is the oversimplification of the reign eventually jeroboam's son fell sick and he sent his wife in disguise to ahijah the prophet but ahijah even though he was blind knew that they were coming and told them what the lord had in store for jeroboam for disobeying his commands it wasn't good news <laughs> jeroboam ultimately met his demise at the battle of zamaram against king abijah of judah when he died his son nadab took his place so for me, according to our ranking system, Jeroboam gets a 4 out of 5. Quality of the reign, 3 out of 5, as he inherited the kingdom in sort of a good position. Well, as good of a position you can get when swooping in during a civil unrest. But his decision resulted in horrible consequences for his subjects. Entertainment factor, 5 out of 5. The story is quite intriguing, especially the downfall of Solomon into Jeroboam, into Rehoboam's reign in Judah and going on. The next king on the list is his son Nadab. 
who reigned for only two years and just like his father did evil in the sight of the Lord. But Baasha, the son of Ahijah, conspired against him, killing him at Gibbethon and taking the throne of Israel. The death of Nabab was the fulfillment of Ahijah's prophecy to Jeroboam of the judgment of God upon his house. Quality of his reign, three out of five. As it does not state that he made any particular horrible decisions or bad decisions really. Entertainment factor is a 2 out of 5 as the story is quite short and not as detailed, giving Nadab a 2 out of 5 in our ranking system. Continuing the trend of the kings of Israel, Baasha also did evil in the sight of the Lord. So God pronounced the same judgment over the house of Baasha as he did over the house of Jeroboam. Baasha also launched a war against the kingdom of Judah during the reign of Asa. Asa in a panic decided to make an alliance with King Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, causing Baasha to stop his pursuit of war. Baasha eventually died and his son Elah reigned in his place. Baasha gets a 3 out of 5 on our scale. Quality of his reign, 3 out of 5, as it does not state that he made any horrible decisions or any good ones or any really bad ones, so we could just say it was just a normal reign. He didn't get invaded. Entertainment factor is a 4 out of 5, as the story is quite a roller coaster, especially his war against Asa. Elah, just like his father, did evil in the sight of the Lord and only reigned for two years because the servant Zimri, the commander of half his army, conspired against him and killed him then took the throne. However, when he ascended to the throne, Zimri killed all the relatives of the house of Baasha, fulfilling what the Lord proclaimed over the house of Baasha. Elah gets a 3 out of 5. Quality of their reign, 3 out of 5, as it does not state that he made any horrible decisions or any good decisions, just his commander of half his army conspired against him. Entertainment factor, 4 out of 5. First King 16 is a roller coaster of conspiracies running through the reigns of 5 different kings in one chapter. When the rest of the army heard that Zimri had killed the king, the people of Israel rose up and made Omri the king and in Zimri's reign in only seven days. As Omri went and set the king's house on fire and burned Zimri to death. Oh jeez, Kings is a roller coaster. Quality of their reign, 1 out of 5. The dude didn't even have a reign. He only reigned for 7 days and got burned alive because the people rejected him as king. Entertainment factor, 4 out of 5. As I said, 1st King 16 is a roller coaster of a story. So on our scale, Zimri gets a 2 out of 5. During Omri's reign, the people of Israel were divided and half the people followed after Tibni and the other half followed after Omri. Up until Tibni died and Omri reigned over the entire kingdom. Omri built Samaria and made it the capital of Israel. But like all the other kings of Israel, Omri did not follow after the things of God and when he died, his son Ahab reigned in his place. Omri gets a 4 to 5. Quality of their reign, 4 to 5, as it did state that he set up the capital of Samaria for, he bought it for a relatively cheap price, at least from what I read in um, Kings chapter 16. And Samaria became a really important place because it was the capital of Israel at the time and all, a lot of things happened in Samaria going forward. Entertainment factor 4 to 5 as 1st King 16 is a roller coaster of conspiracies running through the reigns of 5 kings as stated. Next we have Ahab. Ahab's reign is probably the most detailed and eventful of all the kings of Israel. Ahab was the king that introduced Baal worship into Israel through his wife Jezebel. Ahab is also the king that Elijah had to contend with all his life. Ahab straight up called Elijah the troubler of Israel. The story of the drought that Elijah proclaimed over the nation to Elijah versus the prophets of Baal on the God that answers by fire is the true God all happened during the reign of Ahab. It was just pure wickedness all around when in one instance his wife lied and had a man killed simply because she wanted his vineyard. Ahab met his demise in a battle versus the Syrians which we did cover in one of our unsung bible stories installments which you are free to check out if you are interested. Ahab is a solid 3 out of 5. Quality of their reign is a 1 out of 5. Ahab was the king who I consider to be King Mr. Horrible at making decisions. From his wife choice to the decisions he made to his losing battle against God and Elijah which resulted in droughts, many priests dying, famines and 
all manner of things there is battle plan with Jehoshaphat to go into war in disguise where his he thought his enemies wouldn't pick up that he was the king and he died oh jeez <laughs> that story was a roller coaster and for that reason he gets a 5 out of 5 in the entertainment department oh when you make so much bad decisions it's it becomes a train wreck where it's just like can the story get any how much more bad choice oh he could make more bad choices uh, I love the Bible. <laughs> Let's move on to his son, Ahaziah. When Ahab died, Ahaziah took his place. When the Moabites heard that Ahab died, they decided to come up against King Ahaziah. Ahaziah also fell through the lattice in his upper chamber and was badly injured, becoming bedridden. But instead of inquiring of the Lord, he inquired of Beelzebub. But sending his messengers to Ekron to seek out a seer. So the Lord sent Elijah to intercept the messengers and proclaimed the word of the Lord upon the king, stating that because Ahaziah did not follow after the things of God and to seek out other gods of other nations, he will surely die and not recover. The messengers immediately returned to Ahaziah and told him what Elijah said. In hearing this, the king sent his captains to Elijah who was sitting on a mountain and this is where the story of Elijah bringing down fire upon the army stems from but after three sets of captains got burnt by fire falling from the sky God sent Elijah to the king and he simply reiterated what he told the messengers so when Ahaziah died Jerome his brother became the new king as Ahaziah had no son Ahaziah is a 4 out of 5. Quality of the rain is a 3 out of 5 as it was just a normal rain with little to no invasions. Entertainment factor is a 5 out of 5. 4.5 of that 5 goes to Elijah and 0.5 of that goes to Ahaziah falling through the roof of his house. <laughs> I just found that really funny. <laughs> oh, my you is messed up. Let's continue to Jerome. During Jerome's reign, Mesha, the king of the Moabites, raised up against him. So Jerome went to King Jehoshaphat to form an alliance and devise an attack plan. The attack plan also allied with the king of Edom. However, the initial attack plan failed. So Jehoshaphat, being a God-fearing man, inquired of Elisha on what to do. Elisha instructed them to dig trenches in the battlefield which God miraculously filled with water. When the Moabites pressed the attack, the trenches of water appeared to look like blood to them. So they thought the allied armies ultimately had some disagreement and gruesomely fought among themselves. So the Moabite commanders made the call to advance to the city to plunder it for spoils. But they were wrong and the armies of Israel ambushed them and defeated the Moabites. However, you will think a victory like that will cause Jerome to turn to the Lord given the instruction came from God, right? Well, no. He instead took his oldest son and offered him as a burnt offering to Chemosh, the god of Moab, according to the footnotes of my Holman's New King James Bible, bringing the wrath of God upon Israel. Ah, the kings of Israel, Jesus. Joram is a 3 out of 5. Quality of the reign, a solid 2. Started his raid being invaded, made an alliance with a God-fearing king, and ended it with sacrificing his son to the God of the nation he just got victory over. I come home with the kings of Israel. Entertainment factor, 4 out of 5. The war against the Moabites is a really solid read. The next king in line is Jehu, who went on a God-given mission to wipe out the bloodlines of the wicked kings of Israel and Judah. Jehu was a well-respected general in Israel who Elisha sent one of the prophets to proclaim the word of the Lord to him that he will be the new king of Israel who will fulfill what Elisha prophesied to happen upon Jezebel. Jehu went on to kill both Joram, the king of Israel, and Ahaziah, the king of Judah, as well as having the eunuchs throw Jezebel out of the window of the palace, fulfilling what Elijah stated will happen to her. He then went on to command the servants of the king of Israel who surrendered to him and stated that they stood no chance against him to take out the 70 sons from the line of Ahab. Jehu went on to take down the temples of Baal in a morbid yet full double agent style story that i do plan to cover in a future unsung bible stories video because that 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 story is all it's a roller coaster god bless jehu that his bloodline will sit on the throne of israel going into four generations into the future but jehu unfortunately fell into the same sin that god raised him up to destroy the previous kings for 
Ah, jeez, it's it's a sad roller coaster with Israel. And one thing, like one thing, I was like, I well, know people always say like the Bible is so violent and stuff, but when you read the stuff that some of these kings were doing, it was just like the like consistent disobedience to God and continually sacrificing all their children to these gods, and it was just like it was just to wipe out the entire bloodline from like just the standard back then and even like i don't know by some standards today jeez jay however to me is a the only five out of five king on the list quality of their reign and decision making is a five out of five even though he ended it badly and this amen factor is definitely a five out of five for me personally Next we have Jehoahaz. When Jehu died, his son Jehoahaz took his place and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, to which God allowed Hazel, the king of Syria, to rise up against him, taking over Israel and oppressed him. When Jehoahaz eventually died, Joser, his son, took his place. Jehoahaz is like really short, so it's a 2 out of 5, which is a common score going forward. Quality of the reign and decision making, 2 out of 5 for obvious reasons. Entertainment factor, 2 out of 5 as it was quite short. During Joshua's reign, Elisha was nearing his death, so Joshua came to him and complained about the oppression he experienced from King Hazel stemming from his father's reign. Elisha gave him an instruction to fire arrows from a bow out the east window telling him the arrows represented God's deliverance of Israel from Syria, but Joash only shot three arrows instead of the six times he cut off because of his lack of faith from what I understand from the story. Due to this, Elisha tells him that because he only fired it three times, he will only prevail against Syria three times, which was in fact the case as he only defeated Syria three times and took back the cities Hazel took from his father. When Joshua died, his son Jeroboam II took the throne. Quality of their reign and decision making is a 4 to 5 because he was one of the only kings that seeked after a godly prophet to deliver him from his oppression, but still fell short by not following the things of God throughout his entire reign, and even fell short when visiting Elisha for deliverance from the Syrians. Entertainment factor is a 5 out of 5 for me as it is quite refreshing to read of a king in this era actually seeking after a godly prophet. Jeroboam II also did not follow the ways of God, but God was merciful and did not devote them to destruction but instead allowed Jeroboam to see some success in his reign for Israel's sake. Quality of their reign and decision making, I'll give it a 5 out of 5, as it does say God allowed him to see success simply because God was merciful to them and not because of any merit of his own on Jeroboam's behalf. As it's in my factor, 4 to 5, and it was, as it was a kind of decent read to hear like, a king actually did good stuff, even though it wasn't on their own merit because it did not follow after the things of God, but it was still a good read. Giving it an overall score of 4 to 5. The next king is Zachariah. When Jeroboam died, his son Zachariah took the throne. Zachariah was the fourth and final king to reign from the bloodline of Jehu as God had promised him, despite each of them going against God's commands. Zachariah only reigned six months because Shalom conspired against him and killed him, taking his place. Zachariah gets a 2 out of 5. Quality of his reign and decision making is a 3 out of 5, as it does not say much about him. So, I can't really give him a higher or lower score, so I'll just say it was a decent reign, probably. Entertainment factor, 1 out of 5. As it's, uh, it's just, even, you know, the cycle of kings. Someone conspired against them and killed them. You know, it's just, <laughs> sorry God, monotonous. <laughs> and I, you know, like, I would look at the Bible like that, because, you know, it is the Bible. But, as I say, I read the Bible for entertainment in that uh, manner. I have a whole video on that you are free to check out because usually when i say that people think i'm over trivializing the bible and making it into like a fairy tale or something but that's not what i mean by that and you could probably check out that video for that but yeah a one out of five in my book and zachariah gets a two out of five in all next is shalom shalom however only reigned for a single month before he was overthrown by Menahem classic king of israel stuff shalom one out of five quality of the reign and decision making dude only reigned for one month so i can't really say anything about that reign dude literally only reigned for one month and got overthrown entertainment factor one out of five for me as i said basic king of israel someone conspired against them killed them and take the throne story 
During Manahem's reign, he was invaded by Paul, the king of Assyria. But Manahem gave Paul a thousand talents of silver that he will ease his invasion and strengthen an alliance between, between the two. I believe he also like was given a for, like an offering to to um Paul. You could read it for yourself in uh, Second Kings fifteen to from um jeez. Should just open my Bible and double check it. Yes, and it says in verse 20, And Mahanim extracted the money from Israel from all the very wealthy for each man 50 shekels of silver to give to the king of Assyria. So, yeah, I'll give him some points, in a sense, for like making an alliance with a king even though he did not follow after the things of God. It was kind of a smart thing compared to the other kings. Entertainment factor, 3 out of 5 for me, as it's just a basic second king story. When Manahem died, his son Pekahiah took his throne. Pekahiah, following the trend of the past kings, did evil in the sight of the Lord and only reigned for two years, ending with Pekah, an officer of his, conspiring against him and taking his throne. Pekahiah, that is not what that is. Pekahiah gets a 2 out of 5. Quality of their reign and decision making is a 2 out of 5. Literally not much was stated about it. Entertainment factor, 2 out of 5. Another king loses their throne because an officer, relative, brother, something conspires against them. Next you have Pekka, who reigned for 20 years and also did evil in the sight of the Lord. During his reign, the king... Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, came and took Ijan. Abel Beth Meirka, Genoa, Kedesh, Hazor, Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali. And he carried them captive to Assyria. My accent isn't working with me today, so I was not able to say all of those in one go. Then Hosea conspired against Pekka and killed him and took his throne. Quality of the reign, one out of five. Dude lost a lot. A lot of tri he lost an entire tribe and many territories, which is something the other kings of Israel did not achieve. <laughs> Entertainment factor a three out of five. To hear like you lose an entire tribe and then a couple other territories was like, oh wow for me, he's <laughs> losing everything here. <laughs> oh jeez, I am unhinged. Because of that, Pekka gets a two out of five. Pika, Pekka, so something like that. <laughs> the final king, Hoshea. Hoshea, the last king of Israel before the exile to Assyria, followed after the trend of all the kings of Israel to the end. He also did evil in the sight of the Lord and had the nerve to conspire against the king of Assyria. So when the king of Assyria discovered his plan, he imprisoned Hoshea. The king of Assyria captured Israel and carried them away to Assyria. Israel then sinned against God following the practices of the Assyrians to which God allowed the enemies to prevail against them because of their disobedience. He separated them from the land he promised their forefathers because of their constant disobedience and as a result foreign nations moved into the land of Israel and started doing even worse things than the Israelites did against God which provoked God to anger allowing all kinds of things to happen to them in the land. Some of the people suggested that it was because the new dwellers did not know the rituals of the God of the land and asked one of the priests who got carried away to return to teach them. However, every nation continued to serve their own gods but feared the God of Israel. Hosea gets a 2 out of 5. Quality of their reign and decision making 0 out of 5 for obvious reasons. I don't need I don't think I need to explain why he gets a solid zero out of five. Entertainment factor five out of five. It's an absolute roller coaster of a read to the end of our sad race to the bottom. That was the reigns of the kings of Israel during the divided period reign. I mean Compared to the kings of Judah, this one was just like sad. It was just like, oh. It's like, geez, could it get worse? Oh, it can't. And they kept going down and down and down until they got captured by the Assyrians. And with that, we have come to the end of our Kings of Israel tier list. This is the tier list. You'll see me just constructing it at the end. If you enjoyed, then why not consider leaving a like and even subscribing for more of the style of content. I do plan to do one more for the United Kingdom period of Israel. So that's Saul, David, and Solomon using a similar tier list to our Kings of Judah video. Also, let me know what you think of my scores and the ranking system.
these kind of videos are just meant to be a little fun tier list that I come up with from reading the Bible. Link to the tier list is also in the description if you want to do it yourself. If you enjoy the video to the point that you want to see another video that we have to offer on the channel, then check out our Kings of Judah tier list, which is available right now. Thank you.